Um, is it time? Sure is. All right, let's get started. Uh, we have a lot to cover. Um, so this um, session is called Serverless Smackdown. So I've been um, working with a lot of cloud services and have been uh, interested in comparing and contrasting um, specifically the serverless uh, computing in the, the big three. So that was the idea behind this. Um, so this is more of an intro level. Um, so we'll be looking at, um, you know, a, a brief intro to what service computing means and then actually look at demos and compare and contrast uh, with a very simple HTTP triggered uh, 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 function. All right. Uh, with that, let's get started. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you had, um, you've been enjoying the day. I just uh, attended, um, I think, Rob Richardson's um, micro, micro databases. That was a pretty good one. Okay, so um, this is what we're going to look at today, um, an overview of, um, or, or here's what's on the agenda, right? So let's start with a little bit about myself. Um, so about me, my name's Naveen VK, and yes, that is my official last name. Um, has been that way in India for a few hundred years. So um, if you have time, I'll go into the details of that at the end, little tidbit. Um, technical director at Invisia. Invisia is a very small um, company based here in the Midwest, um, offices in uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, and um, Madison, and I actually um, in the Madison office. I have over 20 years of uh, professional experience, full stack developer, Java.net, more comfortable with the back backend, um, um, a lot of expertise in, in all kinds of databases, uh, but I do front end too. Uh, my current inter interests, um, machine learning, have been dabbling with that off and on um, for about five years now, I think, when I first started hearing about it. And um, and right now I'm working on a project, my very first project, which uses machine learning. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, also uh, interested in the cloud, cloud services. The last uh, two years I've been exclusively working with Azure. So that's my comfort level, but I've been dabbling with AWS for quite a long time now. And off late, it's been quantum computing. So uh, there's um, a couple, um, uh, classes at uh, Coursera that I, I took, um, and those were fun. Um, one of the things that I love, like to do is I love to share whatever I learn at various meetups, conferences, and stuff like that. So um, I do a lot here in Madison, a lot of meetups here in Madison. Um, fun facts about myself, three of them. Let's see. Um, second degree black belt in karate. Um, and if um, I teach a lot of dance fitness classes, um, so check check out my classes. If you've never tried one, um, highly recommend it. So right now I'm teaching a couple online ones. Shameless plug over there. And let's see what's the third one. Um, uh, I do a lot of um, half marathons around town. So this year has been weird. So I've just been running around town. So you might see me early in the morning, um, like 5, 6 a.m. So. Um, Serverless computing. Let's get started. Um, before we actually get into the uh, nitty gritty details, get our fingers dirty, uh, we need to know, there's some theory that you need to know, some definitions and some terms and things like that. Um, and um, serverless computing, of course, it's on the cloud. So, and I found this and I thought it was quite funny. Is homework as a service available? Um, Pretty relevant for both parents and teachers these days, I suppose. Um, all right, the first thing that you need to know is uh, what is a function as a service? So it's a category of services uh, provided by, on the cloud, like cloud providers, function as a service. And what it means is you focus on your function or your code or your application, that's it right? Everything else is managed by the provider, right? So you don't have to worry about the runtime. I mean, you, you do have to state what it is, but you don't have to worry about managing the, the runtime, the middleware, the containers that are needed, the operating systems, the virtualization, and the actual hardware, right? The server, the storage, the network, everything that's needed for your app to run. 
so your focus is just on your code and nothing else and the provider takes care of everything so um, that's function as a service um, and um, because of that it inherently um, by default you get a lot of things that the cloud uh, cloud provider um, you know tax onto that it just adds on to that and you get it all uh, as part of the whole thing like you don't have to worry about scaling right um, uh, so that's one of the things that that you have to um, that you get for free um, so with that let's delve into some of the things like what really is serverless computing um, does that mean is there is no server just our code is running out there in the ether um, no that's not, not the case you do need the server you need all the other um, resources you just just means that don't think of it as no server right serverless does not mean no server it means you do have a server rather than you using less of it and all the server resources are abstracted and less of these resources are actually being used. So your focus is on your code, right? That's what you really want to worry about. And then let the cloud provider take care of everything else. And the one thing that uh, they, with serverless computing that the cl a cloud provider provides is it creates and manages all these resources on an ad needed uh, on an as needed basis by your app on demand so if nobody's using your app none of these resources are available they're all kind of um, think of it like offline like a sleep mode they go into a sleep mode so that way you're really not being you're not paying for having the server up and running just in case somebody wakes up and makes a call to your app right um, so, and the fun thing is, um, or one of the things is, the cl cloud provider only charges you for the actual usage rather than the entire, all the resources that are needed for your app to run, right? Rather than the entire in infrastructure, you're just charged for what is actually being used um, by your by your service by your code, right? And um, um, and that's how it keeps you know you're paying pennies um, uh, to the dollar on that fractions of those actually um and it service computing belongs to the function as a service category of cloud services and it uses uh, behind the scenes it uses event-based architecture right that's the whole architecture um based on how all this stuff works um event-based architecture so basically your your code or your app is triggered by an event right so that means you're on the consumer side right so some event is triggering what your um, serverless computed function service is right and example of events all kinds right um, you can have um, something that triggered by a HTTP request somebody clicks on something or enters your URL and that's how it, it gets triggered um, by um, somebody uploading or, or a, a file being uh, placed in a specific folder or somewhere right um, on the cloud obviously um, and uh, you can schedule this right every run this every five minutes or run this every hour or run this once a day or you know you can so it's a timed event um, you, database event streaming events you know this um, thing is getting streamed okay now we got to do something so those are some of the examples at a very very high level this is what um, event driven architecture looks like right it's really 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 high level um, look into this there's lots of stuff out there um, but i just wanted to post out there uh, show this because what we're really doing is this side right the consumer side is what we're doing all right um, so why or why not? Or when do we use serverless computing and when sh we shouldn't be using serverless computing, right? So um, basically, what are some of the use cases? Um, anything, actually. Um, the advantages, the pros of using serverless computing is it reduces operational costs. Remember, you are paying just for what you're using, not for the whole, infrastructure that's needed 
to run your application. Just that's, you know, whatever is you're using for that period of time. Um, let's say um, it's here in the US and um, people, you know, access this, your app off hours, right? Um, after they get done with work, right? Between 5 p.m. to 10 a.m., uh, sorry, so 5 p.m. to let's say 5 a.m., right? For that 12 hour period or vice versa, or they only during the work hours, like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., something like that. Um, and that's, you're paying just for what is used when, right? Because it's not all the time. Um, one of the things that you, um, automatically get is scaling, right? So the more people access your, uh, the more requests that come in um, that trigger your your serverless function, um, it'll automatically scale. Let's say all of a sudden, um, hundred or a thousand requests comes in, right? So it'll, it'll, it'll scale appropriately, and you don't have to worry about a thing. Um, quick deployments because you don't have to worry about all this infrastructure and all the things that are needed. All you focused is on uh, your code, and that's about it. Um, uh, resource efficiency, right? Because you're you don't have the server idle the entire time, right? The provider um, creates all the resources that, that your app needs at the time of when that need is, when it's being used. Um, otherwise, you're not really using that those resources. So it's, it's very efficient, more uh, resource efficiency and reduced latency. So basically, um, uh, let's say if whatever data center is closest to me is gonna serve my, my request basically, right? And behind the scenes, the, the provider's taking care of all the stuff, you don't have to do a thing. Um, what are some, why would you not use serverless computing? Remember, it's not, um, it's not the answer to everything, right? So um, it's not, you know, uh, you have a hammer, you're looking for a nail, and everything looks like, no, it's not, right? So it's not for everything. Um, definitely not for long running processes, right? You want these short processes, right? These quick things that, events get triggered, you want to respond to that event and you're done, right? Not this long running process, definitely not for that. Um, plus, um, if you need something that has um, very little overhead and needs like quick response, um, this is not a good, um, this may not be the best option, right? Because if it hasn't been, your, your function hasn't been accessed in a while, um, the very first request that comes in, right? The provider has to ramp up all these resources that are that are needed, right? Um, your gateway resource, the you know uh, whatever the uh, server, a web server, an app server, whatever is needed, right? Um, and if you're running on Node, you know get it all up and running. So that cold start, it's called cold start, um, takes time. So your very first request is always takes that's where you have the overhead. But once it's up and running, the subsequent requests are pretty good. Um, but if that's not something what you want, um, and because of SLAs and stuff, things like that, that may not be the best option. Um, vendor lock-in, you'll see this in, in the demo, but um, it's very specific to um, you know what the vendor says, this is how you need to implement it. So you have to follow there. Um, and then you, you may be able to port some of the code and the logic, but you have to rewrite some of the configuration and something else for some for another provider. Um, and it's going to be if there's an error or uh, something happens and you're trying to debug this um, because all the backend stuff is abstracted. It's going to be really, really, really hard um, for you to debug that. Right? It's not impossible. I mean, you can all use all kinds of logging and things like that, but it's going to uh, it's going to it's going to be harder. Right, it's not as um, as easy. Um, security. That's I put this here um, because um, yep, you can secure your front end, uh, but remember all these resources. It's a black box. You have no idea what the cloud provider. Are you sharing a database? Are you sharing a web server? Are you sharing? You know, if you're sharing resources with other. Um, um, 
you know, other apps out there, serverless apps out there, um, how are they being shared, right? So, which is why, you know, you got to be careful about that, right? You, you have to know what you're doing. Um, so that's why I put that one out there. Um, ask questions along the way. Okay, no questions. I'll keep going. Um, all right. So um, here are a whole bunch of providers, but the big three, right? Um, AWS, uh, so their serverless um, uh, service, right, um, is uh, function as a service is AWS Lambda. For Azure Functions, um, sorry, for um, from Microsoft, it's Azure Functions. Uh, from Google, it's the Google Google GCP Google Cloud Platform um, serverless functions, right? And as you can see, AWS was the first one uh, on the scene way back in April 2015. So they definitely have the biggest market share. Um, and then quickly, uh, Microsoft jumped in about you know year and a half later. Um, and then um, Google was the last one, but there's a whole bunch of others out there. Uh, while actually looking for, I had no idea that Oracle had a, um, uh, a serverless function. I didn't even know that something like Twilio existed, right? Um, I knew about IBM, um, but that's about it, right? So there's a whole bunch of things out there for you to choose from. Um, but those are the three that we'll be focusing on. All right. So we're done with that. Let me keep a quick eye on time. We're doing good. Um, so I also threw a couple uh, slides here for uh, statistics, right? So um, just just to see like, hey, what are the stats on these, right? And I thought this was a pretty good quote. So remember, these are stats that are out there. The link is down there. Um, take it with a pinch of salt. Right. Um, so this one was um, as of um, August 2020. Right. And I would have loved to see. I tried to see if I could get this trend line from like a year before. I couldn't find it. But that would have been good to see what the trend was. Um, so like as you can see, there's a whole bunch out there. Um, and um, obviously, um, uh, AWS has the biggest share. Um, this was another slide um, that I thought was interesting. So this was who the major players are and what their market concentration is. Um, so they're saying, you know, this was as of last year, 2019. Um, I chose this because it was more, more, more door intelligence. And so, you know, but take it with a pinch of salt. Um, so those were some statistics. So now let's get into the actual SmackDown. So the, the big three is what we'll focus on, AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. All right, let's get into some demos, people. Um, so um, this is a visual code, right? Visual Studio Code, um, it's free. I don't wanna pay for visual code. Uh, Visual Studio, sorry, Visual Studio, you, you need a, a license for that. Um, this one is free, so this is what I used. Um, and as, as an example, um, I, you know, this, this service function is gonna make an API call to um, the CDC's um, APIs. They have all these APIs to track uh, COVID. And the three things that I'm, well, the one thing that I'm interested in, the current positive uh, cases, right? There's a whole bunch of data available. So um, it's totally a Node.js, basic Node, didn't want to um, use, you know, I could have used React, Vue, any, uh, any of the other stuff, Angular. I just kept it basic Node. Um, and so Node.js will be my runtime, right? Um, and so let me run this so you can see what it looks like and then we'll um, we'll deploy it so it's basic node there's nothing else just basic node.js and that's about it so there it is and so by default, as you can see, if there's no state provided, it defaults to Wisconsin, and, or I could 
go grab something else, state, Illinois, fine, or um, um, Iowa, right? So that's pretty much what it's making that call and grabbing that data. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of things that get uh, sent back, right? Um, but that's pretty much what I'm interested in. Um, so the first one we'd be looking at is Azure um, functions. And I'm going with that because that's, I've been exclusively working on Azure Cloud for the last couple of years. So this is, this is my comfort zone. So I start with something comfortable. Um, so with this, um, you can see that um, I have to, uh, my JavaScript, my index.js, um, I have to export um, a function, basically. Uh, it's an asynchronous function because, you know, I'm waiting on this, right? Um, and along with that, I just have to provide um, a function.json. This is where, this is what configures everything, right? Um, so um, it's saying that the it's triggered by HTTP, so I'm using a HTTP trigger. Um, here's what's coming in, get post, even though I don't have a post, right? It's just get, um, and then that's what's uh, going back out, right? And that's that. Um, so, and let me show you that currently there is nothing deployed if i look at all my resources um, there's nothing in here that says uh, nothing's deployed yet um, so and I'm, i'll show you three different ways of you know for the three different um, um, AWS and Azure and GCP, three different ways of deploying this. So this one, I can deploy it right through um, Visual Code. I did have to install this extension. It's Azure Function Core Tools, but I could literally, um, why am I saying? Oh, yeah, disable that function, that one. That was my hello world one. So this is what I'm deploying. So deploy that function. So create a new function. Yes. Uh, let's see what we want to call it. NVK. Um, easy function. Um, Create a new function. That was my. That was what I tried yesterday. Okay. Or data. Let's do that. Right. And um, I have to choose a runtime. So that's my runtime. Um, uh, I have to choose what location my resources will be set up. So I use North Central yeah, last night when I was testing this out. Um, and you will see, I will refresh this and you'll see all the resources being created, right? There we go. There was nothing there, so now it's creating these resources, right? So right now there's nothing in here. It's still creating those resources, no resources to display. And you will see that let me refresh. So it created an application insights. That's how we monitor that function. It created a storage account. I didn't have to provide anything, right? So all I did was gave it a name, a unique name, right? And um, what, where um, these resources would be created, the location, right? And that's it. 
those are the two things that I had to provide. The rest, the rest, it's doing on its own. So right now it's deploying. Check output window for status. All right, so that's, let me hide that. All right. All right, it's still deploying. Here's my app service plan. Here's my function app. Let me see what's happening in here, right? So here's my application. And here's my actual function. Right. And here you'll actually see my actual code with my console logs, everything, right? That is exactly what was in my index.js. It took all this here and right here right so now to in order to test this um, here's copy There it is, right? If I don't provide a state, it will default it to Wisconsin. Let's see, what do I want? Oklahoma, right? There you go. I did not have to specify anything. All that was done for me. So that was for AWS. Oh, sorry, for Azure. Um, the same thing, I'll do this for uh, AWS. So, and for this one, I'll show you how, we can, how you can do this um, on the console itself, right? So I'm, I'm in Azure, um, sorry, I'm in AWS, the other A, um, connected to, that's where I'm, I'll be deploying, right? Uh, Ohio, so East, so I want to create a function, right? And I wanna create a function from scratch, uh, what? Create a function from scratch. Uh, here's my function name. Uh, okay, AWS. Um, and uh, COVID. Right. And as you can see, here's my runtime. There's a whole bunch of other runtimes that are available to you, right? So that's what we'll be permissions. I'm not changing anything, keeping it default, advanced settings, keeping everything default, right? So creating one from scratch, create that function for me. And behind the scenes, AWS is going ahead and provisioning all the things that I'm needed for my function. Um, here's my designer and I need to add, um, ooh. so, for AWS, remember for um, Azure, it was module.exports, right? So I was exporting a, a, a function. So here I'm exporting a handler function. This is what's needed for AWS. So let me go to my AWS. Um, here's my handler, right? So I'll just grab everything here. Um, copy and I'm going to paste everything right here. Paste. Right, and before I deploy, I need to add a trigger. Why is it doing that? I need to add an API gateway trigger. So I want to get a, it's a HTTP trigger. 
um, security. I want it open, so I'm not securing it or anything like that. Don't care about the additional settings, right? There's my designer again. There's my designer. And here is what I copy pasted. It was the exact same code, except that instead of exporting a, a function there, I'm exporting a handler function here, right? And all I do is deploy. And once that's deployed, If I look at, here's my endpoint. Right, here's my endpoint. By default, it's Wisconsin. Let's give it another state. Equals uh, uh, North Dakota. Right. So exact same thing except that it needed um, it needed um, a handler function. Same code, right? Um, and the last one is, um, is a GCP function. In this one, um, I couldn't, like in the other two, I could test a whole bunch of things and I could delete all my resources, right? I could delete the function here. This wouldn't let me delete, so I had to disable it because you know I'm using my credit card, to, it's charging me for um, all that stuff, and I didn't want this up and running when I'm not using it. This was this was for a demo, um, so I had to disable it. So the only thing I could do is enable it, um, and you can see that it doesn't let me delete that at all. All I can do is disable it. Um, and here's the code for um, the um, this is for the the Google Cloud um, function, right? Exact same code, right? Um, same thing. I need to export and um, um, a function. That's all I needed to do, and Here's my ASIC function. All I'm doing is a get, right? So let me do this via command line. Um, they, I was in test two. So that's where all the code is. So it is G Cloud App Deploy. Right. So it's telling me that's where it's going to deploy it. I'm going to like, yep, sure, go for it. And while that's being done, um, here's my service slash. API and I think it was version two. Oops, still deploy. Sorry. Let me go back in here. And this is command line. So um, I'm showing you three different ways one through like Azure has this, you can deploy directly through your Visual Studio or you know Visual Studio Code. Um, so you could do it same thing with the console, right? And then um, AWS, I showed you that you could do that with the console, and this one is command line. So all right, so now it's done. Let's see if that works. There we go. Once it's deployed, all right, some other state. State equals um, Wyoming. How about that? There we go. So, same exact function deployed three different ways. Um, in the case of 
um, Azure, it needed, here's the configuration. In the case of um, AWS, I it did all that behind the scenes, right? So I didn't have to provide, um, you know, otherwise it's an event.json is, is a file that you had, the configuration file. And for this, you had to, uh, for GCP, you have to provide a um, app.yaml. You know, there's a whole bunch of other things that you can specify, right? Um, service plans and stuff like that. I just, you know, it's default, but the one thing that you have to do is um, Node.js. All right. So uh, let me see if there's any questions, if I can find my, no, not that one. Oh, sorry, chat. Um, okay, cool. All right, um, so the last thing, um, we have 10 minutes left, so that's, we're doing good. So back to the demos. Um, and here's the SmackDown, right? So um, between the three code structure, index.js, you export a handler function for AWS. In Azure and GCP, you just export a function right for configuration for aws it all goes in event.json there's a whole bunch of documentation out there you can check it out and for azure it's function.json for gcp it's it's a yaml file right local testing um i could easily test azure and gcp just by running the app right um npm start right i could do that um, i couldn't do that with aws uh, maybe it's because i I'm not, you know, I'm more of a beginner level for Node, so I don't know if there's a handler function and how to, how to work with it, right? So it's maybe my limitation, but I had to write a separate Node app with Express and everything, you know, the good old way. So that's that's how I knew to, how to do it. Deployment, um, console, CLI, you know, um, GCP I didn't have any console way of doing it, so it, it was all through CLI. Uh, command line interface, that's what that is. Um, Azure had a nifty way of uh, deploying directly from your uh, Visual Studio or Visual Studio code, so which is what we just saw. Documentation, excellent documentation everywhere, right? Um, there's tutorials, there's, if, if you have any questions, you can literally, th that documentation is pretty extensive for all three of those. I had no problem, um, getting my questions answered just looking by documentation cost um so this i had to look it up um for aws and azure it's um 20 cents for a million invocations that's how much you get charged um with gcp the first two million are free but after that it's 40 cents uh, per million invocations and pricing structure may change so that's what it is currently um I was able to get all three up and running. Once I figured out what, what is it that I needed to demo, I, I was able to get all three up and running pretty quick. Um, I just had a little problem um, with trying to run AWS locally. Um, so I had to, you know, the code was the same. So, you know, I could tell, I knew it was working. Um, and with GCP, the, the one thing that I didn't like was, um, I can't, I can't delete. I cannot delete. The only thing I can do is disable. So all I can do is disable the application. I couldn't delete it. I'm like, why, why not? Because it, here, you know, I can go back to my, my functions and I could literally, um, what the? I could literally select and why is it doing that? I select and um, action delete. And with Azure, I can delete the whole resource group. Then I don't have to worry about that. Um, with Azure, I'm most comfortable with that. I could see all the resources that were, that I was, that are needed for this right away. Um, in this, I can't really tell. Um, maybe in monitoring, I can look at some of those 
right? Uh, but I can't very nicely list out all the resources that are needed for my function to run. Um, an app, uh, the GCP, uh, um, they have a pretty nice, like all three of them have a pretty nice dashboard um, and services and instances and all the other fun stuff. But the one thing that I didn't like was I couldn't delete it. I just, I'm like, why couldn't I just delete this, the, the function that I just created? So those were back to my screen. Um, and we are done with that. And here's my information. Uh, there's my uh, work email and personal email. Um, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter. I'm not a big Twitter person or Facebook person. I'll occasionally check those, but post very little, but you'll, you can definitely reach me um, through the other things. So let's see if you have any questions. Um, I don't think it was per month. It is period, right? It's all by how much you're using you know, I, I don't think it's per month. It's it's per invocation. So if you if you use up your two million invocations within a, a week, you gotta start paying forty cents for the next million. I think there's there's enough documentation out there, so you can just search for um, GCP serverless function pricing and you should be able to see something over there. All right, well, thank you for uh, for attending my session, you know. I definitely had fun because um, something new for me to learn um, and anytime I learn something, I just have to share my, my knowledge. So I'll put my screen up again so you can see and I'll keep an eye out on the um, chat as well. All right. So future, I do want to add the SmackDown. I do want to add security. I do want to add a database in the background and stuff like that. This was my very first um, dipping my toes into all this and I want to see how and so it'll be a truly smacked out smackdown so this was just a flavor like an intro to so